Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for GWBC Radio's Open for Business. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of GWBC Open for Business, and this is going to be a fun one. Today we have with us Joanne LeBounty, and she is with Spartanburg Meat Processing Company. Welcome, Joanne. Thank you. Good morning. Um, before we get too far into things, tell us about Spartanburg Meat Processing Company. How are you serving folks? We are. Uh, we have been in business for 21 years. We're a USDA-inspected meat processing plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina. We have uh, expanded our business from locally to nationally to internationally over the last 21 years. And we provide the best fall off the bone, fully cooked, ready to eat baby back ribs that is eaten anywhere in the world. Now, how did you get into this line of work? We started, we had a company in Vermont, um, which is not pork territory. So um, 25 years ago, we decided to relocate it into the South. We were getting a lot of our supply from South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, which is the pork area. And we found this little plant in Spartanburg that um, was vacant and needed to have some renovations. So we came in and took a year and a half, renovated, and we moved here. And it's, uh, it's been a great state and county to work in, and um, we just thrived. It's been great. But how did you get into the kind of the meat processing business? Was this a family business your whole life you've been in this industry? No, actually, I worked for the company that was in Vermont. And when we relocated to South Carolina, um, we changed the company, uh, started Spartanburg Meat as a new name, started with five partners. Four of those partners were men. Um, not to say that's anything bad, but that's kind of how the structure was. And then uh, we were doing great, and 9-11 happened. And we had to make a decision. A, a number of the restaurant chains we were cooking for went out of business. And we had to make a decision if we were going to lay people off or how we were going to move forward. And we decided to go into the retail side of baby back ribs. And um, we applied for an SBA loan. Three of the partners resigned their shares. They were afraid to put up personal guarantees, which I understand. It was a really scary time. And then I bought out the last partner um, about a year later to become a woman-owned company. Now, what did you see that they didn't see? Like, you obviously had faith that this was all going to work, but there was some hesitancy on their part. What, were you, what was your kind of vision of this? I worked, started working for my dad, who had started his own company from the time I was 15. And he's just one of the smartest business people I know. And I worked for them for 15 years. And I saw through challenges and diversity, um, he, he figured it out. If, you know, if one product was not going to be needed in the future, he was looking, he was forward thinking and looked at what he should be bringing in and who he should be working with and was always changing it up to make sure that he was relevant and offering new things. And so I, I took that approach that there's going to be a need out there and restaurants are not going to do as well, but home eating is, and that's the direction that we took. So now once you kind of made that mental shift, um, did that require a lot of changing the way that you did business, or was this kind of a small tweak in your operations? It changed. We had to change up uh, equipment to change the packaging, to go from bulk packaging to individual packaging. And it was a challenge. It was a challenge because um, we're not Smithfield or Tyson. We're not the big players. And so when you go out into a competitive field with a new product, it was very challenging to, to get that business, but there was a need. And um, one of the first companies we went to that I went to, I flew to California and presented to Safeway, which was at that time they had 1,700 stores. They were huge. And, excuse me, they wanted, um, they wanted a rib, and they didn't have anything that they had found that they liked. And I said, well, of course, you haven't tried ours. So I flew out with my son, and we presented to the meat team in their office building. They had given us a little room to heat ribs up in. And in the course of 20 minutes, not only did the meat team have their product, 
and thought it was great. But the whole building was coming in because they could smell the ribs and our sauce is, of course, it's a proprietary recipe. Um, but it was great. And needless to say, before we left that day, we were on board and they actually decided to go uh, to private label. One of the other factors that was important is that in that is when I took over the company as a woman-owned business, um, I had met Roz Lewis at GWBC and had recognized, or Roz had me recognize that there was value in becoming certified as a woman-owned company. That actually is what landed that Albertson Safeway business for us. And from there, once you have that credibility of a huge chain that you're packing for, it was an easier growth path upward. And then when you say that GWBC was able to be helpful in this regard, one of the things that they do a great job with is kind of uh, give access to smaller companies to larger enterprise companies. And um, it, there's, it's a win-win for both sides, right? Absolutely. Um, we have advantages that we were able to offer that company that they would not have been able to see or would have been willing to look at had we not been a woman-owned certified company. And we're smaller. We don't have the big overhead. We're able to give better prices. And at least that having that certification gave us the opportunity to present. It's not always... Um, you know, just having the certification doesn't get you the business, but having that certification gets you in the door. And that's, that's what's made a huge difference for us. And that's usually what businesses need. They just need that access to get in the door to just pitch, right? Just to let them know we exist and, hey, this is another uh, opportunity. Here's another avenue maybe you haven't considered before. And, and that's, a, that's the whole key there, right, is to get the access, it is definitely the key, and, you know, I, I resisted that at the beginning. I'd see Roz at these events, and, and, uh, and GWBC would have their table, and it's like, mm, I, you know, yes, okay. I, I didn't see the value, um, but there was, there was persistence in that being presented to me and explained to me, and, and thank God I listened. Um, it has carried forward to us today. We have uh, a number of chain store groups, uh, Food Lion, Dalhays Umbrella up and down the East Coast, um, some of the Kroger stores, that if we didn't have our certification, we would not have gotten into those stores. And I know this is not all about just certification, but I just, I can't say enough how important that is and the value that that has brought for us. Right. I agree. I, I mean, this is all I do is interview business leaders and some of them obviously are women business leaders. And I tell them about GWBC and, and about the certification and how it does open doors. And some people are, you know, honestly resistant to it because they're like, I'm a business owner. I'm not a woman owned business owner. And, and I can understand that, but I just think that they're missing out on a lot of opportunities because these things exist. This is just, it's a, it's part of the deal, and this is a real opportunity to really catapult your business into a whole other stratosphere. Um, but if you don't want to take it, obviously you can't make anybody do this. But I think that it's a fantastic opportunity, and it's to me it's silly not to take advantage of it. Business is hard by itself, <laughs> you know. Yeah, absolutely it is. And, and it, you know, to, to recognize that stating I'm a woman-owned company, okay, I'm not stating I'm a woman-owned company and that's what makes me special. I didn't make the rules, but I will play by the rules. And if using that advantage uh, gets us in the door, it now becomes a level playing field. I mean, if my product wasn't good or my prices weren't good, I, w I wouldn't get the business. But at least, at least it's great to see that there are businesses out there that are willing to give you an opportunity because you are a woman-owned company. And those things just paired together, you have to be at the right fit, but those things paired together is, um, it's a really an advantage. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that we're any less because we're a woman-owned company. You know, I don't, I don't harp on that. It is a male-oriented industry, but um, it did get us in the door and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I will play by the rules every day of the week. Right. Yeah, I, I think that it's fantastic because what it does, I think, from the enterprise level company is that it gives them access to smaller players and innovation that they may not – it may not be on their radar because of their own kind of situation. And they're – you know, just because the incumbent has been getting the work doesn't mean there's not good work being done elsewhere. So this just lets them see a broader picture of what's available to them, and uh, it gives the, the small person – 
an opportunity. That's all. It's just, they don't. You're not making them buy it. You're just saying we exist, and hey, you may want to consider it. That's fair to me. Absolutely, absolutely. So now, um, in your journey, you've gone through a lot of challenges here. So from almost from the beginning, you were had to make some major pivots and and make some adjustments. And it sounds like kind of foundationally, you had this vision and you had kind of a good mindset to be able to handle some of this adversity. But starting at, you know, right around 9-11, that probably wasn't a fun time uh, for dealing it, it, with that. It was, it was challenging. And not, not only that, um, we had to figure out what to do business-wise, but two of my children also work with me here in the company. And it's, it's a real great responsibility to have, geez, at that time, I think we had 24 employees. You have 24 families that are counting on you for their income. And it, it's really, it's a lot of pressure. Um, but thank goodness we were able to take that and move forward. Since that time, um, and we have not had one unprofitable year. Um, we are profitable every year. We have grown from... Um, that 24 employees, as of before COVID, um, we had about 99 employees that are, are in the plant packing for us. And we've pretty much maintained um, our work level. Um, obviously, being in the food industry and with COVID going on, it's, it's demand for meat is tremendous. And we actually have pivoted and added uh, a chicken line now that, that COVID happened. But my sales team is not able to go out and find new customers or promote you know, new items to existing customers because we are maxed out. And we, we hit a 10-week lead time, which is everybody says, oh, it's a great problem. Well, I feel bad because I feel like it's our reputation. But we're getting through that, and we're, we're pulling back ahead. But our sales team had nothing to do. And uh, we were having a conversation one day back in March, and um, we said, geez, you know, I'm staying home, I'm eating too much, and maybe I'm drinking too much. So my sales director says, why don't we put those two things together? Let's take desserts, and let's take alcohol, and let's just blend them. So um, we had a fun time. We've, we've got now, we have a line that we're carrying called Voulez-Vous Foods. It is a line of decadent desserts for the adult taste. And uh, we've got a strawberry martini strudel that is uh, coming out this week, uh, working on some champagne lemon bars that'll come out for New Year's. And they're just, they're just fun items. And the existing customers that we have in the meat department is now pairing us with the deli department and saying, hey, look at these great items. We've already established our credibility. And because of COVID, we've actually pivoted to, we've actually added four new lines of product that we're going out and selling. And I know COVID is a terrible thing, but for us, it's actually helped us to grow our company in a new direction and to think differently. Right. And this is another great example of kind of looking at the marketplace, seeing what's happening, and then adjusting because you know they people say this is a new reality it's just reality <laughs> you know at some point this is the new normal is normal and uh you just have to adapt to the circumstance i mean when restaurants can't sell as much and you went to the consumer directly and then now your uh kind of lines kind of maxed out now you have to go into different areas i mean that's adjusting based on the information you have in front of you that's that's what every business owner should be doing right now the ones that can, I know they're trying. It's it's really sad to see some of the companies out there that um, are just having a really hard time. So um, we're also looking at other small businesses here in our area that maybe we can have uh, do some product for us. That uh, I know we order out every day trying to support the local businesses. We were very fortunate two years ago, um, and, and I am a firm believer in divine intervention, um, we were asked to produce the TGI Friday brand nationwide and internationally of the baby back ribs. And again, COVID has forced us to not only continue to produce our product under TGI Fridays, but we now have gone out and found co-packers to pack other items under the TGI Friday brand. There's a line of chicken, a line of pulled pork, different things that are coming out into, into the market. And 
yeah, folks that are that are struggling, change your thinking. You know, turn around, look behind you instead of where you've been going, and and you might see something that maybe you've missed, or even talk to a mentor or a um, SBDC has been great. Score is great, and even the group at GWBC can open doors to corporates that are there that there may be other items that you could do for them. So just keep your head up and we'll get through it. Right. And don't be afraid to talk to your customers. Um, it, it should be that they're your partners and that they can tell you, look, you know what? I understand this. There's an opportunity here. Have you thought about this? And and kind of brainstorm with them. Let them kind of beta test some some of the kind of out there ideas you have and see what sticks and just keep trying stuff. Absolutely. So now, um, how has it been for you to kind of keep your team kind of motivated, especially right when the pandemic hit and that was kind of so disruptive and you saw like the restaurant industry and all that stuff kind of, you know, having to shut down in a lot of cases. How did you kind of motivate the team and help them kind of manage that uncertainty? We we stepped back and had a meeting with our, our employees and, um, of course, implementing PPE was huge. Uh, not only do we have the cloth masks, we've got um, the the medical masks. We've bought fa- we brought face shields in if somebody's more comfortable with face shields. Um, so that's all. That's all. We've bought sanitizer. We've sent sanitizer, big bottles home with all the employees, trying to make sure that the steps that we implement here in the plant, now being a meat plant, we already had numerous hand washing stations and, and all the sanitation processes, which was fortunate for us, but trying to make sure the employees are carrying that through to at home. And then again, um, because we were considered necessary and um, not shutting down at all, we stepped up and did monetary bonuses. And actually we did another one last week saying, you know, thank you, we appreciate you. I know it's a little bit more risky being here. Um, trying to take care of them as best they as best we can. And, and again, listening. Um, what do you need? We actually had a, a month go by, and I think it was during March, that the employees couldn't find toilet paper. So we went out and, you know, used our accounts and bought numerous cases of, of toilet paper, and we're sending toilet paper home with them. So, and I know that's a bit ridiculous, but you do what you have to do to keep them motivated and keep them coming in. And um, monetary seems to be a big piece of it. So that's what's worked for us so far. Right. But even the toilet paper is an example of listening to your customers. In this case, your employees are your customers and say, and they say, look, this is hard for us. And you say, okay, let's try to solve that problem. And, uh, you know, when you have that mentality, a lot of magical things can happen. Well, that's, I think I think that that's important, and you know the other the other piece for me is I've been doing I've been working since I was 15, so I'm not going to give away my age, but that's you know that's over 40 years, and with great success I feel comes great responsibility, and that's not just to um, just to our customers, but that's to our employees and to our community, and um, we're trying to step up and do what we can. It's it's really sad to see how many people are struggling struggling out there and i don't see this COVID ending in the near future i mean i think we're going to be affected at least by another two years in one way or another Mm -hmm. yeah i agree that this is this is not something that's going to be solved in the next 90 days or even six months this is this is going to be with us for a while it's going to leave a mark and but you got to adapt as business owners you have to be able to adapt to the circumstances and um, it's th- these associations that like GWBC that are there to support you and to help you, you got to take advantage of that because it's it's hard and it's lonely when you're, you know, kind of leading the ship and, you, and your people are kind of counting on you. And to know that you have a support network around you, whether it be GWBC or other associations or organizations or your leadership team or mentors, whatever the case is, you know, it's time to kind of lean on. It, it lean in on those folks and, and let them help you. Absolutely. Um, I joined the voice committee from GWBC. And again, your comment about, you know, it's lonely at the top when you cannot show, I feel you cannot show any weakness to anyone around you, especially at work. 
because they're counting on your strength to help them be strong. And through the voice committee, um, I have been able to talk with other women leaders and hear their challenges and what they're going through. And then, you know, one of the calls recently, it came out that somebody said, you know, I'm getting my sleep every night, but darn, I'm still tired. I'm tired when I get up in the morning. And I can relate to that because it's a constant thinking process um, in, in what, you know, what am I doing today? Is this enough? What am I doing tomorrow? So uh, again, I would encourage any listener, whether, whether you're a member of GWBC or not, to get out there, join a committee, um, be part of hearing what others are saying. Zoom meetings are great. Um, obviously, we're not doing things in person, but you can still connect and you can still be a voice and hear a voice and hear words of encouragement. There are a lot of, a lot of companies and people out there that are, will encourage you and they will give you advice that uh, maybe for things that you wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, and I think that um, women-owned businesses, this is an extremely valuable resource. Uh, GWBC is an extremely valuable resource in terms of having a safe place to be vulnerable and then maybe ask a question that maybe you're uncomfortable asking with the leadership team if it's all male, that you, like you said, you're supposed to know all these things. And if you don't know all these things, no one knows all these things, but you have kind of a safe place with other people that are going through a similar thing as yourself to maybe get that answer uh, that may be uncomfortable to ask in a, you know, in your normal day-to-day job setting. It definitely is a safe environment, and, and that's, uh, that's priceless. And, you know, other folks may have gone through the same challenge that you're looking at immediately, whether it's financial, um, how am I going to get these bills paid, or, you know, my bank doesn't want to lend on inventory anymore, where am I going to go? There is so much resource in other businesses that may have gone through the same thing. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. There, there, there are answers out there that are available. You just have to ask, and not being afraid to ask is huge. Right. You know, they say history may not repeat itself, but it rhymes. And something that's going on in your business in, a, in another industry, it might be a similar thing. And uh, you might be able to learn from them. It, it doesn't have to be your exact industry for you to learn from somebody else's um, experience. Exactly. So now for you, what's the most rewarding part of the job? What's the, the thing that gets you fired up every day? I think it's my customers. Um, I love the people that I work with and who I talk to and the fact that we have been able to help them through times where you go into a lot of stores, at least back in you know March and April, and meat counters were empty, but I can guarantee you our product was sitting there, and they're grateful for that. And having that conversation about, like you said, what are their challenges and how can I help? Um, I'm a real people person, and so it's actually been fun to do Zoom calls with the customers and coming up with new ideas on, okay, you need something. What can, what can we do to help you? And being able to find those solutions and offer them um, is amazing. I think that we're very blessed to be in the food industry during this, this virus. And um, I actually took my first plane trip two weeks ago and flew to Vermont and saw my parents. Now, granted, it was still six feet apart and with a mask because they're in their 90s. But um, that was, that's one of the, my most recent things I'm grateful for, and that my children work with me. Two of my children are here. Uh, one is, does our accounting, and one is my general manager. And being able to work with them every day and see them and share the challenges and also seeing them coming up with um, results and answers and ideas uh, because they are the future. This is you know set up for perpetuation, and they will take the company over and keep growing it and take it to new heights. So I'm just very blessed. Now, any tips for the home uh, rib cooker? Buy ours. Uh, TGI Friday brand, Riblicious. Now, we also do a lot of private label, um, Weiss and Spartan and Albertsons and, oh, gosh, we, we co-pack about 30 different brands. But if you look in that little bug that's on the package, that little circle that says USDA inspected, if you see number 21010, that's our number. You'll know that came from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Whether you're in the United States, whether you're in Canada, um, we export to Germany, Korea, and Kuwait. Um, 
you'll know that that's our product. And our sweet Carolina sauce is really to die for. It's our own secret recipe. And um, they're heat and eat. All you have to do is take them out of the package, warm them up, and heat them and eat them. And uh, they're great. So that's my secret tip is you don't need to <laughs> struggle and cook for three or four hours. You can buy great ribs in the store. Good stuff. Well, Joanne, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're doing important work, and we appreciate you. If somebody wants to check out uh, what you got going on, is there a website? So we have two websites. You can go to www.eatbarbecueribs, E-A-T-B-B-Q-R-I-B-S. That's for the ribs. And then you can also go to Voulez Voo Foods, V-O-U-L-E-Z-V-O-U Foods, Dot com and you can see all these decadent desserts that are coming out. And then if somebody uh, is a business leader and wants to connect with you, is LinkedIn an appropriate place? I'm on LinkedIn. Yes, sir, I am. Well, good stuff. Thank you again for sharing your story. It's important for leaders like you uh, to kind of let people know what's going on and share their wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on GWBC Open for Business. <laughs>